Alright everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today's project is something that I've been sitting on for quite a while and I'm finally getting to it. In fact, uh, this video was supposed to go up uh, before the Platinum from the Road video. i give you an idea of just how long. But anyway, today I'm going to be extracting Platinum and Palladium from catalytic converters. Let's actually uh, get a little closer look at what we got over here. We've got uh, three catalytic converters here, one of which I've cut open so you can see inside. See that? There's the catalytic material. Right there. Uh, the material that was here, there was uh, there's two sections in them, and I just take the one out. And it's in this bag here. But the material that comes out of it looks like this. It's uh, people call it honeycomb, but it's actually got like squares. So I wouldn't really call it honeycomb, but it's similar to that. But the material is made of a zirconium dioxide ceramic with an alumina wash coat and the precious metals are in that outer wash coat. Now I have checked these with my x-ray fluorescent spectrometer and indeed I do see spikes in the data indicating platinum and palladium. This uh, box over here is some material that I actually purchased on eBay. It's uh, 10 pounds of uh, ceramic from the catalytic converters and uh, when I check this with the x-ray I see only a very little amount of platinum and almost no palladium. This tells me that uh, somebody ripped me off. They had uh, processed this prior to sending it to me. So if you're uh, buying stuff on eBay, be sure to get intact catalytic converters that somebody hasn't already messed with. I mean, uh, catalytic converters do lose material over time. You know, the exhaust reacts with the the precious metals and it does lose a little bit over time but it doesn't lose this much. Anyway, um, I think uh, because of that I'm actually going to be omitting this from our uh, little run here. So we're just going to have the material from uh, I believe this is about five catalytic converters right here. So we'll be able to see how much metal we can extract from that. So the first thing we've got to do is get the catalytic material out of the catalytic converter. Now you could either cut it open with a grinder, which you can do, but it is a pain. Or, what I'm going to do for this one is take a rod, preferably a metal rod, but this is a wooden rod, it'll do, and just uh, beat the material out of the converter. Just rod it out. So I ended up uh, cutting this one open because it was uh, rather hard to rod out and the two chamber design makes it rather difficult. And you can see it's got this uh, stainless steel mesh surrounding the ceramic core. So we don't need any of that. Ceramic is what we're after. Let's see if I can pry this out of there. Oh, I broke it a little bit. There you go. Looks just like that when it's intact. One thing that I think is kind of cool that you can do with this uh, catalytic material is you can uh, set it up and then heat it with a blowtorch, just like this. And you can turn off the torch, turn it back on without lighting it, and you see that the spot stays hot because the platinum and palladium is reacting with the oxygen and propane, actually causing it to burn without a flame. See now, it's cooled off almost completely. Let's hit it again, Let's see if I can get it come back. So, no flame, but it heats up. So now, it's just a simple matter of taking this catalytic converter material, stuffing it into this glass vessel here. If it's small enough to fit into the jug, just throw it in. There's no sense uh, crushing it any finer than you need to. If it's uh, too big to fit, well, you are going to have to break it up a little bit. If I was a little smarter, I might put on a respirator for this. <laughs> In fact, you know what, I think I'm going to. Who knows what this does to your lungs. So as you can see, all of the catalytic converter material has been placed inside of the jar. 
now it's time to make up the leach solution. Now the primary component is of course going to be water. So I'm going to dump in enough of this distilled water to fill it up to the point where it covers the catalytic converter. Where's that funnel? That's probably just about what we need for the water. So now I'm gonna put in some hydrochloric acid. I probably only need a few milliliters really to dissolve all the platinum group metals, but there's gonna be a lot of side reactions happening. So I put in roughly a liter of acid just so that it uh, remains in solution strong enough to dissolve the platinum group metals. Now this solution as is will not dissolve our precious metals. It might dissolve iron and nickel but that's about it. In order to get it to dissolve those other metals, I have to add an oxidizer. In this case, I'm gonna be using a calcium hypochlorite, which will make chlorine gas when it reacts with hydrochloric acid. Chlorine gas will be trapped inside of the bottle and should dissolve into the liquid and will be able to oxidize the platinum so that the hydrochloric acid can further dissolve it. Here we go, I'm just gonna add it in a little at a time. You see the bottle become a little bit uh, yellow-green there as the chlorine gas is being evolved. And you'll also notice I'm using a stopper which has been wrapped in Teflon tape because the Teflon is a lot more resistant to the chlorine than the rubber ever thought of being. So now I'll just uh, kind of mix this around a little bit to get that chlorine gas to dissolve into the liquid. And let it sit for a few minutes and then I'll add a little bit more. It doesn't really need a lot of chlorine, but there is a lot of side reactions happening, so I want to have a, quite a bit of an excess available. Let's go ahead and give it the second dose now. And there we go. All right, that's looking pretty good. See the bottle's still green, so I'll probably leave it uh, like this for an hour or two before I add another dose. Probably only give it a couple more doses before the solution's saturated in chlorine. Here it is over in the sunlight, so you can maybe see it a little bit better. You can definitely see the chlorine gas. Just uh, mix this around occasionally and that should dissolve the platinum and palladium. So I can already see that the solution is changing color as it dissolves those precious metals. That's a good sign. So yeah, I'm gonna leave this sitting probably either outside or in my fume hood for about a week. Because in my testing I found that after about a week is where I stopped recovering any of the metal. I've done some small scale tests here. Uh, chlorine's some nasty stuff, so I definitely don't wanna store this anywhere where I'm gonna be living. I'll see you guys when this is done. Alright, so here we are. I've had it sitting in the shade for approximately one week, giving it a shake every now and then, just to make sure everything's stirred. And so now the majority of the platinum group metals should have been dissolved. See down here, the solution is a nice orange color, indicating that it has indeed dissolved some metals. And so now I've brought it out into the sun so it can uh, get a little bit warmer because I'm going to now release the excess chlorine. Uh, now I'd like to have a scrubbing system set up so I can react with that chlorine to neutralize it. I don't have anything at the moment that I can do that with, so for now I'm just gonna release this small amount of chlorine into the atmosphere. It's a small enough amount, it really won't hurt much. But definitely stay upwind of it. And, uh, that should disperse and go react with uh, maybe concrete or something. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just let this sit in the sun. The heat will warm the solution and drive off the majority of the chlorine. So I'll probably let it sit here for a couple of days. I'll see you guys uh, then. So here we are after letting it sit in the sun for uh, over a week. 
Uh, most of the chlorine should be gone by now. So let's uh, actually pick it up and move it inside because I'm going to be putting it in a uh, somewhat precarious situation and I don't want some animal to come knock it over. Okay, set it right there next to that glass cylinder. The idea is that I'm going to transfer the liquid from this into here. And to do that, I'm going to turn this bottle over so that it can drip down into this other chamber. So I've got some uh, foam rubber here. Let's cut a few pieces of this. And stick it on there just to protect it. Like that. I've also made a little uh, glass tube with a bend in it and a little filter on the end there. Uh, this is to let the air back out so it doesn't create a vacuum lock. So let's just stick that in there, tape it into place. Try not to break the glass. Probably didn't have to be glass, but there we go. Okay. I'll just let it drip out. So here it is after adding some distilled water so I can rinse out the rest of the fluid. I decided to uh, pour off the strong stuff, keep it separate. At least for now. I won't have to boil that down quite as much, right? <laughs> so I've got some bad news. The cat managed to get into my lab and, well, he's a bit on the uh, rowdy side. I ended up losing most of the fluid. It uh, soaked into the concrete and, of course, the platinum group metals uh, form insoluble complexes when they react with the carbonates. So it's pretty much impossible to recover unless I actually chiseled up the floor, which yeah, it's just not worth doing that. I was going to redo the video, you know, get some more catalytic converters and basically just redo the whole thing, but it's been almost a year now and I still haven't. I do still have some of the liquid, and you know what? The chemistry is all the same. My yield will just be lower, so why don't we go through and actually get the platinum out? I'm just going to get this stirring, just like that. I'm going to add some very fine copper powder. This is to reduce those metals into metallic form. This is just a simple displacement reaction. And since copper is higher on the activity series than iron and nickel and stuff is, it should only drop out the precious metals, leaving the iron in solution. Okay, so here we are a few days later. You should see that the copper has turned to a dark color. Indeed it has, as the other metals have stuck to it. Now what I've done here is I replaced the oxygen that was above the liquid with carbon dioxide. This was to hopefully keep the uh, copper from dissolving into solution. If I have an oxidizer present along with copper salts and hydrochloric acid, the copper can dissolve. Anyway, let's get this taken back off, and I'm going to siphon the liquid so that I can recover the little bit of metal that's settled down at the bottom. Okay, there's most of the liquid gone. You can see the black, which presumably is my precious metals. Okay, so now I've got most of the solution rinsed out. Let's put it over here into this flask. Now we should have our precious metals along with a bunch of excess copper.
Now how do I dissolve out the rest of the copper without dissolving the precious metals? Well, take a little copper sulfate and aqua ammonia. Now as long as I've got oxygen present in the air or perhaps a balloon filled with pure oxygen, that'll keep the ammonia from getting out as well. I should just be able to put it on the stir plate. And I'll leave it there for, I don't know, until the copper is dissolved. Okay, so this has been going for a while now and I suspect at least the majority of the copper has been dissolved. Let me uh, get rid of this oxygen balloon, so it's no longer needed. And I'm just going to pour this back off into the beaker here. You can see the solution is dark blue due to uh, copper complexes with the ammonia, but also kind of black due to the finely divided precious metals. I guess that's all that's left now is to collect them together into a solid, shiny button. First thing for that, of course, is to wash out all of this copper solution. It would probably make more sense to filter it, but this will work. There it is with the copper washed out. Now I can just take this and let it evaporate dry. We're now on the home stretch. Let me just break this loose so it'll come out of the beaker. Now, as is, this would probably make a pretty good catalyst. <laughs> so I'm tempted to save it, but I'm sure you guys want to see it melted into a bead. Okay, so I could melt it down, probably mix it with some lead and do a cupellation, but I actually don't have any crucibles clean at the moment, so I'm going to try smashing it into a pellet and see if I can melt it from there. Or I can lose a bunch of it. That's also a possibility. Okay. It's kind of already a bit shiny. Let's anneal it by warming it up with a torch. Well, now that I've beat on it a little bit and it's no longer a super fine powder, let's put it into one of these and actually melt it down. Alright, that's probably good enough. Turn off the oxygen first, let it cool under the uh, reducing atmosphere. Now that it's cooled off, let's see if I can bust that metal bead out of there. There it is. Shiny bead of metal. See what it weighs. About a quarter of a gram. Not bad considering. Let's see if I can flatten it out a little bit. It's pretty hard. It's actually denting the steel. <laughs> So the x-ray results are in and my little bead of metal is 70% palladium, about 10% platinum, 5% lead, 12% copper, and a little bit of rhodium. So about what you'd expect. Uh, considering it's only about a quarter of a gram, uh, it's only worth maybe a few dollars at most. <laughs> of course I would have gotten significantly more, maybe one to two grams had the cat not knocked over my fluids. And maybe someday I'll try this again with better equipment and maybe some more catalytic converters. But until then, hope you enjoyed. 
I'll see you next time. Thank you.